This broadcast is inappropriate for all ages right here on hashtag we are movie club salutations I am camera and I am conversation ready this week's movie is Iron Man it's like a big button I can press boop boop do you like it when I boop you Tony you like the boop get booped get booped so if you're unfamiliar with Iron Man, I don't know what the fuck to do for you because the Avengers are super popular. Iron Man was a pretty popular uh, character even back in the comics, even though he's a non-family friendly douchebag of a character. Uh, in the comics, at least, uh, he's a womanizing, drug abusing alcoholic. Uh, and he's not really uh, much better. I think he's pretty much that in the movies. They just play it up a lot better. They play it up uh, as an aspiration, if you will. So, this is kind of a reimagining, a re retelling of the Iron Man story uh, that's birthed from the, the wars in the Middle East. Which is funny enough because uh, Tony's company supplied the weapons for the war. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, but of course he thinks he's a, a nation's arms dealer and not a terrorist dealer. But, you know it is. Like when you get your, buddy, your terrorist buddies together and you pretend to be a nation so you can buy arms. That sort of thing, right? Um... The people who are actually running the company besides him while he's off uh, philandering, maybe. Um, they care about the bottom line. They care about dollars in the pockets and nothing else. And thus, why the world is a horrible place. And Or more pointedly, why Tony can, Stark, of all people, can become a superhero. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so we start on Humvee in the desert. We do this stupid um, uh, in media res fucking thing. Well, it's not exactly a media res because he doesn't forget but we start in the middle of the story where like ids go off on the humvee that he's traveling in uh he gets taken or uh, yeah he gets taken and then we flash back to this ceremony and that's the actual beginning of the movie um i would love to actually cut that around and just start at the ceremony and then put the put it back in chronological order because chopping it up doesn't serve anything it's not a tarantino flick it's not Pulp Fiction, even though I hated that. The, I hated the way it was edited as well there. Um, the story itself is real powerful, but I don't know. I like it the other way around. Brr, 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 brr. Um, but even at the ceremony, there's like video evidence of Obadiah, that Obadiah hates Tony. That Tony pushed Obadiah to the background, away from the focus, um, out of a, a seat of power even, if you will. Um, and of course, uh, Terrence Howard, uh, fucking, I don't like people that fake make math. Um, it just math, not meth. Um, <clears throat> he could do both. I don't know, but I know he did one for sure. But Rhodes is trying to give Tony the award and he has to track him down at a fucking casino. Um, where Tony picks up a, record, a reporter that's, uh, trying to indict him for being like a war criminal. So, really bad taste she has uh, but of course he's handsome he's rich um he's desirable by all so therefore it's he's transferably desirable to her um so uh, the next morning like pepper has to take out the trash if you will and then tony or uh, rhodes is waiting three hours on tony uh at this plane and then tony gets there and like oh now we're waiting on you dick face but uh, he gets him drunk on the plane. They have a stripper party. I'm ap I apologize. That's not the right term. They're not strippers. They're flight attendants. I always get those mixed up. I apologize. Um, at least on the Tony Stark plane, if you will. Um, of course, uh, we get to see the the weapons test that they're flying to the Jericho missiles system, which is very impressive, and we never hear about it again. Uh, now, granted that uh, Tony has stopped making weapons through Stark Industry and has become a technology company. By Iron Man 2, I have no idea what the hell they're actually selling anymore. Um, maybe Tony's just funneling all the money to make Iron Man suits. Who knows? Um, but we flash, we finally flash forward to the cave because we realize why he was kidnapped <laughs> at this point is that somebody wants some weapons and Tony's good at that. He's good at making weapons, things that hurt people. He's not 
He thinks he's good at the love, but he's not. And I have no idea what this voice is that I'm doing. I think it's almost Mike Tyson, which could be insensitive for several different reasons. Um, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> I don't care. Um, so what's fun is he wakes up with like a battery in his chest. He refuses to help, so they torture him. Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, like when you refuse to do what bad guys tell you to do, they're going to torture you, or they're going to kill you, or you're going to comply, and then they're going to torture and kill you. And then maybe if you're lucky, they won't do in your family. There's never any reason to give in to bad guys, because quite frankly, they're going to fuck you over somehow. And typically it's with bullets. That's, I'm just saying... Um, so he builds like a mini arc reactor, uh, to put it in his chest so he doesn't have to haul around a battery. Of course, that lets him, um, get around a little bit easier so he can work better. So that, I guess that's the excuse there. Um, but they're not really concerned with his health, so more so their timetable. Um, so by the time, like, he gets an idea, uh, with the agreement of working on the Jericho missiles... He's decided he's going to make some kind of suit instead that he can power up with the arc reactor that he made in his chest. Uh, I'm sorry, he didn't make it in his chest. He made it in his cave with spare parts and then put it in his chest. Yeah, so anyway, so he's got Jensen, uh, this Arabic... Um, I apologize if that's incorrect because I really don't know. I'm just kind of assuming. Um, doctor guy... Uh, and so, like, they help, or he helps everything, and he manages to make the very first Iron Man suit, which really is like, <laughs> like the Tin Man on steroids is really what it looks like. And, and there's no guns on it or anything. I think he has some flamethrowers, um, and then he punches people. He essentially has pneumatic uh, servos in the suit that gives him super strength. But I will note that he doesn't have any metal covering his hands. So anything that's an actual punch is literally his knuckles hitting whatever it is. So I don't know if you've ever punched somebody and you hit them in their skull. Um, it doesn't always feel great up against your hand. Uh, even when I'm doing this, like, I'm hitting the meat of my hand. Um, if I just punch a wall, there's not a lot of give there. It hurts. That's essentially what he's doing every time he punches straight. But of course he's escaping for his life, so who gives a fuck? Um... And sad, 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 because Jensen was a cool guy. Uh, he dies in the escape, because, quite frankly, I don't want to dwell on it. Um, the time in the cave, got him the suit. Fuck it all. Um, he runs out flamethrowing and fucking everything, and he manages to blow up enough stuff that he has to use the emergency rocket boots. boots. And then I'm calling bullshit on the following physics. He flies through the air, the rockets give out. Of course he's going to fall to the ground don't think he ever expected to actually get that far uh but he's diving face first at the ground if this is the mountain here or the not the mountain well it's a mountain of sand um he's diving head first here he ends up head first poking out in the sand like this no idea how that continuity works at all if he comes in like this he breaks his neck on impact dunsies dunsies uh he's dead the way he landed, where it like managed to twist at the last second, he ended up in the sand like this, broken back at best. <clears throat> Maybe you could say that the suit protected him, but it's not an anti-bear suit. It was a bunch of metal that he hun he hunked together. Um, I'm just saying, it's fucking weird. Uh, but Rhodes eventually finds him in the desert. No idea how this actually occurs. He just happens to be there. Let's call it plot armor and move on. <laughs> It's just saying, like, the construction of that is really weak. Um, and then, of course, what do you decide you want when you're, you're fucking... Like, I don't blame him for wanting, like, an American cheeseburger. And then Pepper's all ready to order him hookers. Or whatever the hell it is that he wants. He's like, no, 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 no. A press conference. Um, he could have got both. He could have got the hookers and the press conference. Or I'm sorry, ladies. Because, let's be honest, Tony Stark probably doesn't pay for ladies. Um... He probably pays ladies that happen to want to sleep with him, but he probably doesn't pay for sleeping with them. Um, so, the, another sign that Obadiah is a piece of shit is that he knows about the mini arc reactor, reactor before anyone tells him. Um, so, without like that evidence of like a good guy telling 
uh, Obadiah on screen about the arc reactor, him knowing is a, is a red flag. Um, but of course, Tony Trust loves this guy, so he's all like, well, who told you, Pepper? Pepper, uh, uh, fucking his bodyguard, I can't remember his name, Happy, that's it. <clears throat> but he never follows up. For such a smart guy, he leaves out certain things because he just makes wild assumptions about, like, well, why would you ever do that? He wises up by the third movie, I'll give you that. Uh, or Civil War, Winter Soldier Two, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. Uh, let's let's skip forward a few pages here, because uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. Like um, he ends up trying to work and improve everything. So of course he improves his arc reactor. He starts building the Iron Man suits. Um, that was a really really fun bit where he got Pepper to play. Um, essentially heart surgery on his chest um, and like she literally had his heart in her hand it's a real great foreshadowy like special moment I just really liked it, it gave me gave me the goozies um, and then at the party he gets to dance with her they finally kiss uh, she's all worried about the, the public relations of it all what it looks like for her to be kissing her boss and it's Tony gets remember like as a guy, it's cool to sleep with as many women as you possibly can, right? So he gets no flack for kissing his technically subordinate, but she's all worried that it'll look like she's trying to gain favor with him by finally giving in, or it'll look like that that's how it's always been. Um, so she gets nice and weird about it, and so he ends up um, going to try to get drunk. The reporter that he slept with... Um, Ends up confronting him about Gomera. And if apparently it's the first time. He goes and confronts Obadiah because Obadiah has been running the show. He's faithfully been doing as he's told and staying out of the spotlight while Obadiah runs things. And of course the way Obadiah has been running things is uh, putting injunctions against Tony and getting him kicked off the board. <gasps> what are you going to do? Um, so of course... Obadiah bad guy I made a point at the beginning about like the bald guys being bad guys because that seems to be a thing in Disney movies uh, let alone Marvel movies uh, but Jensen was bald and he admitted to doing some bad things but he wasn't a bad guy he wasn't a villain so for Jensen we're not going to do that stereotype um <laughs> okay so Tony decides to fly to Gamora to test the suit and this is not where like superheroing begins. Um, honestly, this is not a superhero movie. Like it's kind of the origin of a superhero, but like there's very little superheroing going on. Um, he flies to an active war zone and combats uh, and, and enters as a combatant. Um, he uses <laughs> uh, bullets and small missiles on enemy armies, soldiers, if you will. Um, he, he, he literally leaves a guy to be killed by the citizens he's been bullying. Um, what else did he do? Uh, he got shot by a tank. That was fucking hilarious. Um, oh yeah. The, there's the whole bit with the, the aircraft that he accidentally gets hit by and then he saves the pilot, blah, blah, blah. Um, so he went and killed some folks. Like, let's not gloss over that at all. Tony Stark is all about that murder when it suits him. Um, now grant I'm all for it like but I don't there's a difference between calling someone a superhero and then calling someone else a murderer for doing the same thing like Punisher in the in a lot of the early stories of for Daredevil uh, they caught flack for actually killing people and putting people out of the streets for good um, whereas like Tony Stark does it and he's a superhero <laughs> it fucked um, Tony Tony's Tony may even be super super intelligent but like if he doesn't have his little toy what is he um he's just a drunk <sighs> um and he's he's no hero like I, I don't know i can't think of a single instance where iron man was ever a hero in my eyes uh but that shows you where i'm at for the next three weeks guys <laughs> um so fun bit uh we finally get to see Obadiah and the and the big boss from the cave meet up and like have a little uh, 
uh, kissy kissy, but Obadiah paralyzes him, has all his men killed, kills him, and then takes all his stuff. So, somewhere the relationship went south. I'm just saying, if you're not spending enough quality time with your boyfriend, things like this happen. Um, uh, Funbit was getting Pepper to uh, hack Stark Industries, um, like via a thumb drive. And of course, she took way too long to do it. You grab the files and you look at shit later, honestly. Um, but then she had to sit around with Obadiah, who at this point Tony knows is dealing dirty. I guess he doesn't know that he's a murderer or that like he's an actual evil person at that point. Because I don't think he realizes that until um, he paralyzes Tony himself. And then he actually, he literally breaks his heart by ripping it out of his chest. Um, and that seems pretty fucking cold. Uh, but it was better than the crazy guy from Ant-Man. Cause like, well, Obadiah was like, maybe he smiled about where it was going to lead him, but he didn't like laugh during it. Like a crazy person. He was just kind of cold and calculated about it. It's like, this means nothing that you're going to die here on your couch because of me. <laughs> Whereas the other guy was like, I'm going to kill you, Hank. <laughs> and it's like, Oh, Hank Hill. I'm so sorry. Um, so, but, like, putting Pepper in that position is just, was kind of a horrible thing to do. And then she's still gone by the time Obadiah gets home to paralyze uh, Tony, I think. Oh, yeah, because he sent her away to do something. So, Tony ends up crawling by himself down to the basement to get his old replacement, or, or his, old, his original arc reactor that he built in the cave, because Pepper didn't throw it out, like she was told to do. That bitch! How dare she? Uh, so we still have to deal with Tony. And then Rhodes, I think, of all people, will show up, right? Do I have that right? Uh, I don't think it was important, so I didn't know. And then we get this nice little, uh, like, illusion or foreshadow of Iron Man 2 uh, with War Machine. And fuck, War Mach Don Cheadle? Give Don Cheadle his own movie. Do a War Machine movie. Do a War Machine movie where he ends up running into Wonder Man. Um... And form the West Coast Avengers already. Because, I don't know, they're building up the team a little bit much. And they were doing it for Infinity War. And the theory that I'm getting from people is that a couple of those fuckers are going to die permanently. Um, and I'm still in the position that Scarlet Witch is going to end up uh, willing her boy her boyfriend, her uh, brother back. Um, and so we're going to see Quicksilver... Uh, within the next five movies probably because whatever <clears throat> whatever the part two is that they're renaming because they were going to do infinity war part one Infinity war, war part two that part two movie whatever that turns out to be is going to incorporate the uh the fox world properly so deadpool very well may show up x-men may very well show up wolverine for instance um and i'm willing to bet that they'll reboot the world um, or she'll will Quicksilver back to life and um, he'll join the Brotherhood of all things and maybe she'll even leave the Avengers to, to go with him. I would imagine that he leaves the Avengers to go join the Brotherhood because um, he died for them and what, what was the point of that? It's like I already died for this team once. Um... Or maybe he doesn't know. Maybe it's the version that gets put back. There's so many options. That's my point. Um, so, of course, on the, the shitty arc reactor, the, especially when the new suit's designed to work with the new reactor, thankfully it's backwards compatible. Um, like, he's underpowered, and he has to go uh, fight Obadiah. And Pepper ends up going to shield. That's what it is. Um, Coulson ends up intercepting her as she's leaving. She uses him as a shield, which is funny. Um, and so the agents move in on Obadiah, but they didn't know about the advanced, the new advanced mech, the warmonger mech or whatever mech suit that, uh, Obadiah made. And at this point, Obadiah has lost his friggin' mind. Let's be honest. Um, it is crazy. Uh, how uh, intense Obadiah is about throwing cars around and just murdering people. It's like, this is great. Um, it's like he's one step away from Tony the Tiger about murder in his bowl. Um, so, of course, there's this long, drawn-out fight of suit versus suit, which 
by this point in Marvel's career, we're really tired of doubling up. Um, there's just a really bad formula going on. So I, I think by the time the Venom movie comes out, people are going to be like, I don't want to see Spider-Man versus evil Spider-Man. <clears throat> but this is kind of where it started. Cause remember Iron Man was the movie that like brought Marvel into the mainstream before this, it was like blade and like a shitty Hulk movie. Um, that like Marvel was ashamed of. They didn't want to put their name on blade. And I think now the re-releases have a more traditional logo, but, um, so eventually he tries to do the ice maneuver like that he learned earlier. So like he flies Obadiah as up as possible. His icing thing problem happened. And of course they both fall. And Tony's stupid enough to think that took care of him, but he's running like 4%, 3% battery, whatever. So he starts physically trying to take the stuff off when earlier the machine that he designed specifically to screw and bolt this thing onto his body couldn't do it. Like he's able to take a hand off and so that when he needs it, he can't use it. Um, I don't know. There's just some continuity problems there for sure. But, um, uh, Robot Eye comes back and he ends up walking Pepper through how to overload the big arc reactor and blow the entire facility. So, yay for that. Um, but, 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 um, so, of course, afterwards, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. puts all this work into the cover story because at this point, they're basically, um, uh, makeover artists. Their jo only job is to keep a hush on superpowered incidences, which is not how the fucking world should be. Like, we should have entered Mar the Marvel Universe at a point where, like, yeah, they're superheroes. <laughs> and then Iron Man would join the fray. But, like, Iron Man is one of the oldest fucking heroes. I think, like, he originally, like, came up in the 70s, like, uh, and then has increased his work um, up into the thousands. So he's an old man by this point in the comics. Him and Steve both. Even with Steve coming back out of the ice, um, Steve's getting up there in age. Uh, so it's it's just, there's so many different things happening here. Um, but of course, he blows the shield cover by announcing that he's Iron Man and that it's awesome, etc., uh, etc. Et so, ba 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 ba. Uh, whatever you want to say about that is what it is. Because, um, I don't know, like, I watch this movie and I still enjoy it for being a movie. But I don't enjoy Tony Stark, uh, even though uh, Robert Downey Jr. nails him perfectly. Uh, and I think it's because at one point he was a real-life Tony Stark. I mean, maybe not like a true genius in the technical sense of the word. But like um, he was off his rocker, drunk and into drugs and everything. Uh, all the parts of Tony Stark I see all the time. And it really is Iron Man, the tool that is the, uh, let's call it a hero uh that's able to contend so like even later in the movies like when he's arguing with cap captain's like put on the suit put on the suit because he doesn't want to hurt the frail little human in front of him just saying um all right so next week's gonna be iron man 2 i like that one a little better uh even though a lot of people don't um one of my favorite bits in there is uh i'll talk about it next week but um the suitcase suit is fun the russian bad guy um is fun there's it's just i don't know for whatever reason i feel like there's a lot more fun in that movie um where as iron man this iron man was a really serious movie um and then by iron man 3 it's like they really kind of threw out a lot of the rules <laughs> oh man um but that's all i got for you today um hopefully that was a, a tasty treat for you but uh, until you see us next time, I'm Cameron. Join us over on Rabbit slash Cameron um, for Iron Man 2 and 3 of the following week. Um, which, oh, no, we got to do Hulk. Um, let's say, like, we're almost out of the Marvel Universe. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but until next time, this has been Hashtag We Are Movie Club. If you see anything else we're up to, go ahead and click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.